How y'all doing out there? This is the Black Effect, the real Black Effect. And I want to get into this powerful video. This is one of the most powerful channels that's on YouTube. Comment under this video and argue and try to dispute me if you want. But I know you won't. So let's go ahead and get into this. Webby, the DJ of Webby's DJ, you know, Webby with Little Webby and Boosie, uh, Webby, Wipe Me Down, uh, Savage, R N N R E S P E C T. Most of Webby's songs were vulgar. Do you understand? Like, and I, and I like gangster rap. We listen to that stuff. But Webby, the his raps were primitive and vulgar. Don't get me wrong. Webby was, Webby was never the best lyricist. You understand? But he was a cool rapper. He had to bounce. You know, he was a cool rapper at the time. He was with Boosie. Webby has some songs, you know, that people liked. So I'm not just trying to totally crap on him. But Webby, his DJ, DJ T. Gutter, just recently killed himself and killed his wife. And he mentioned in a long rant before he killed himself. He mentioned a long rant about Webby and the horrors that he had been going through being his DJ and the horrors that had his life had the horror that his life had became DJing for Webby and all of the things that came with that being around him that caused him to spiral out of control, killing himself and his wife. This isn't my words. Like this is what the DJ, he took the time to write this whole dissertation, knowing in his mind, he was fixing to leave the earth along with his family, with his, with his wife or, you know, so, like, I want y'all in it. Like, we could joke and do all this ha-ha, kooky, kooky crap on the internet. That, that you know what I'm saying? That, that cookie crisp shit y'all niggas do. But in real life, I'm going to give you some insight, man. There's a dude coming from blood, sweat, and getting out the mud. If a man, like, when a man's fixing to leave the earth, the words that he say before that, you should take some heed to a man or woman. When a man or woman is fixing to leave this planet, they like they've had it. There is something in them that's pushed them so far. They've been in such a dark place. Satan has got the such a tight grip on them, on their mind and their psyche and their spirit has them in a dark place. To where they can't they can't even hear the Lord anymore. They're in a dark place. Those people don't have any more ego anymore <laughs> let me give you some point it take that ego have to be dead for you to take your own life because a person can't self-harm that's a beautiful mechanism the lord gives you for the most part people don't self-harm until they flip that switch and something just push them over the edge and it get dark but when they what they say those words that a per if you want to get honesty with those people go get it from them people like, find somebody who's on their deathbed, finna be, you know, up out. They'll tell you the honest, real. They'll give you some honest stories. A lot of older people can help themselves because, you know, they, they slipping in the mind and stuff. They just can't help but be themselves. But this man, this young man, was telling you what pushed him. Like, and we can't, I'm not sitting here to say that all of the fault is on Webby. Nah, because the dude did it. He killed himself. He killed his wife. Do you think when he, when, when, do you think the Lord gonna look at it and be like, oh man, you know, give you some, put some, the, put some of the blame on Webby? Nah, you did that. It like the courts wouldn't blame, wouldn't blame Webby. You know, of course the heavenly courts wouldn't. If what's done on earth is what's done on in heaven is done on earth, and vice versa. You're not gonna have. The heavenly courts look at it and be like and and put the excuse, I mean, put the blame on somebody else for something you did. So but in reality, though, when it comes when God does look at Webby 
And just like when I'm looking at Webby, I'm judging Webby from his actions in the situation. And let me read this to you, but because you got to deal like Webby, you got to live with this, bro. I'm tired of our people, you know, claiming it, just talking, giving us a bunch of lip service when it's convenient. Like you talking about Drake coming to people talk about Drake coming to the cookout and and he, what he do and what he done this. Drake ain't done half of the devastation to the community than these people that y'all support. These people are active criminals. We be talking about free niggas with multiple homicides against their own people. Like the dude asked that man on, like the white guy asked the dude on Tales from the Hood. I know y'all saw that movie. You know, some of y'all might not be um, old enough to, to know what I'm talking about. But it was in the movie Tales from the Hood, that white Nazi, he asked him, he was like, man, what color were the people that you killed, bro? Like, you know how I get down. I'm a Nazi, nigga. I'm killing blacks. You know, this is, I'm, we gonna take him to war. We slaughtering them. But, hey, nigga, what type of, what was the color of the niggas that you killed? They were niggas, right? All black. All black. This the problem. We, like, really on some flip. The devil sold us some wolf tickets, bro. And I'm not doing it. I'm not buying it no more. Because I know I come from the cloth, like I said, man. I know that my people, I've seen niggas give up their integrity under the guise of being cool. I saw that. I saw a nigga just straight up lose all his integrity under the guise of being cool and to get some chicks, you know, because that's in our community. That was what was champion, not being smart, not, you know, that. So now when you see um, a certain group of women talking about that, they look up for some high value man, some some dude with the six figures and the this and the this. like, bro, I don't know why you looking for that. Like the niggas you looking for, like the stuff you was behind. A lot of niggas is in jail behind their dead. You know, and they definitely, a lot of niggas got felonies. They ain't finna be in no CEO or no company. You know what I'm saying? For the dudes you was behind. But that's neither, you know, I could digress on that. I'll do another video on that. I want to get into this letter that he, that DJ uh, T. Gutter left Webby. It says, dog, DJ for Webby is living hell. First thing, the nigga don't want to pay. Stop there. That is a huge problem in our community, man. You know, I deal with this. I've dealt with this from dealing with trying to work with the brothers. Niggas wanna don't wanna pay you on time. Niggas like our people, they don't wanna pay. Like a lot, I'm not saying all, and we need to change this, bro. But this is something that black people know about other black people. I'm not talking about nobody else, bro. Our people don't wanna pay. They don't wanna pay on time. They wanna cut corner, like pay you. Pay you a little bit of this. And, and like I said, it's not just, like some white people will probably chime in and tell you that they do this. The same thing. Probably be some Asians and be like, they do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Look at how Asians getting paid over there. Nigga, they getting paid slave wages. You feel me? But that's another story. I'm talking about us. You know, black people, bro. We should be better than this. Especially towards each other. But niggas don't want to pay, bro. They want to cut corners and 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 run the business on some buddy and buddy nigga shit. Run some business on some. I spit in your hand and slap. like, bro, like, nah, let's not let's not do it like that. Let's just make sure the business is tight and we and everything else will fall into place. I lose so much respect for people, you know, like in positions of power, like Webby and. And you heard the stories about I me. Mean, look at Puff Daddy, my God, like people like Puff Daddy. People like, you know, you could go, the list go on and on. Uh, Kanye, you know, Kanye ought to be ashamed of himself. Trying to sell with these, with this Yeezy stuff, this nigga selling, got niggas waiting a year for these products, man. Kanye, bro, Kanye ain't got mental illness and stuff. Mental and spiritual illness. He worried about, a lot of these people just worried about themselves at the end of the day. Niggas be fire, try to fire a dude for not cutting his dreadlocks and stuff like that, bro. You sound, you sound like the man, homie. But anyway, let me continue. It says, first, that nigga don't want to pay. Then the nigga don't want to see nobody around him shine. Oh my God. We could stop there. I ain't even got, I'm not going to keep pausing through this letter, but I must pause at the points where I need to. It says that niggas don't want to see nobody around him shine. How many of us in the community and I'm going to just call it the community. How many of us in the community know and of a, 
or have been in a situation like that where you've been in a group with people, you've been, uh, you might been, um, these might be your friends, you know, you might have even been in some real street stuff, a gang with them, you know. You, how many of y'all have been in that situation where you think that this person is close with you? You think they doing something for you? They might be your bigger partner, your cousin. They could be your uncle. They could even be, you know, like I said, just a mentor, you know. But then you thinking that they that they want to help you, but they want to keep you at a certain level. They need you at a certain level. When you start rising above that level, they start doing things to suppress you, doing things to to hate on you, to sabotage you. The, the people to sabotage you, they right around you. They start doing they, the closest one. The person you think is the closest to you start doing that sabotage stuff to keep you at a certain level. And you be like, man, you think it's the, a source way away from you doing that. You think it's the evil source from way overseas now, nah, your worst enemy. No, it's the person standing right next to you, constantly going and, and grabbing certain things and, and snatching them and manipulating them so you can't get no further. So they can continue to use you in the position that you are in. So let me continue. It says, then that nigga don't want to see nobody around him shine like nobody, not even his own brother. Why y'all think everybody left from around him? I was only supposed to be his tour DJ, but I had to be a driver, a doctor, a security, a PR, a babysitter, booking agent, referee, counselor, road manager, and a list of other things. But yet this nigga don't appreciate none of it. I did all this shit with a smile on my face in front of thousands every night, but I was dying inside. All these times he had seizures on the plane. On stages, in hotels, who you think was there? Me. Because his family ain't want to deal with him. Or nobody on our team wanted to deal with him but me. I drive a quick because he ain't want to pay him. Then every time we would try to make our money in other ways, he found a way to stop that too. Remember what I said about nigga trying to, to keep you in a certain spot? So it's like he don't want to pay, but then he don't want us eating nowhere else. Then the nigga want to get mad in his feelings when Boosie need us to help him. This nigga a straight hater. I can't remember how many times he told me he don't want nobody blowing up off his name. There it is. Right there. You have a lot of us in the community who you want to keep the do. You want to keep your brother out of the light. You want to keep all the spotlight. You want to, you know, you want to be the one out. Oh, it's me. It's mine. I did this. Like Drake said in the song, and say you say your brother Jermaine, but you wanted him to stay out of the light. You know, talking about J. Cole and, and the Kendrick thing. Like, bro, if you if this show, you talk, I'm the big one. I'm the one. It's the big three. It's big me. Man, forget all that, bro. Y'all niggas like, you want to like, and it's not just him. But it's like, bro, if you say that this your brother, y'all grinding together. You don't always have to be the one at the forefront. And so it's your turn. Then you, when it's his turn, you, you rock. Kind of like how Cameron said, you know, he want to say that, oh, man, I support the cats and, and I do this for the crew. But then when Jim Jones had his turn, you didn't give him the same type of energy he gave you. Nah, your milk dud head ass was gone. You, you abandoned the team, bro. And I'm going to do a video on that, Cameron. Yeah, you you was the worst CEO, bro. Like for that, for doing what you did. At first, you went from the best to the worst. But that's what it is, man. A lot of us in the community want to keep the spotlight because that's something that's deep rooted, man. It comes from slavery. But let me go ahead and continue. It said he get mad in his feelings when Boosie need us to help him. This nigga a straight hater. I can't remember how many times he told me he don't want nobody blowing up off his name. That's why he don't do features and he don't like taking pictures with other artists or fans. Niggas think they trying to get shine. Nigga think they trying to get shine off him. It was days I straight dreaded going on tour with him. The nigga complains about everything. Being around him is like having to take care of my kids. We had to remind him every day to take his medicine. Or to not do some stupid shit. This nigga would do some stupid kitty shit and be like, gutter, record me doing this, man. Savage life, man. I, man, it's gutter TV, man. You gotta record. I'm I'm finna I'm finna go 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 take a dump, man, and, and, and then I'm finna go put 
put some sparklers in it, man, and then then I'm I'm gonna take a selfie on on the back of a of a of a U-Haul, and, and then I'm gonna say Savage Light, man, and I need you to record that, man. And then I'm gonna go off and then slap a pigeon and then and, and throw the pigeon carcass into a, a woman's uh mimosa, and I'm gonna say Savage Life, and I need you to record that. Come on, man. I understand exactly what he's talking about. Nigga unprofessional, bro. I don't have time to be doing that and I don't want to. But if a nigga say they don't want to and you try to do that, then they're going to try to clown you. Like, bro, grow up, Webby. Grow up. Because I want to tell you something, Webby. This ain't good, bro. The Lord ain't happy with you. See, the Lord looks at things. The Lord see time. He don't look at time like you. God is in every point of time. In your past, present, and future. Why you think you having all these seizures? Like, who has, like, bro, you be having just straight up seizure. Do you know what a seizure is? Look up the word seizure. When you seize something, look at that. This demonic forces, Webby. It's, I told you what's done on earth is done in, in, what's done in heaven is done on earth. And vice versa. These are demonic forces that are attacking you. Coming and seizing you up. You seize, nigga. You can't even control your functions. You can't treat people any type of way, boy. I'm not, I'm sorry. I don't mean to call you a boy. You can't treat people any type of way, Webby. You can't do that. You got to grow up. You know, and you old. I don't want to see you crapping on this man, family. You know, and talking about, oh, man, I ain't got nothing to do. Try to excuse yourself. Nah. You, you got to give him something. You know, because this is his deathbed confession. So people got anybody with half a brain going to believe this wholeheartedly. But now, I, again, you didn't pull the trigger, but this is what pushed him over the edge. This type of behavior, this stuff, he felt like his back was against the wall. I'm going to continue, OK? It says this nigga would do some stupid kitty shit and be like, gutter, record me doing this. And the shit will never get better because his brother, Derek, super unit, just makes excuses for him. Even though he be mad that he don't pay him either. The shit on the road was so bad. Our longtime manager had a stroke and all. Then the producer of Savage Life 6 had a brain aneurysm. Something or something of that nature. Because he was stressed and all. Webby wanted him to produce the whole album but not pay. And didn't want to do split sheets. Like what kind of craziness bro? Like, our people in the community got to stop trying to do nigga business. We got to do, treat our, we got to treat ourselves. We got to have more integrity, treat our businesses better, and treat our people better. You understand? And treat people who we hire better, even if we ain't hiring our own people. Like, quit trying to do nigga business. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't want, you don't want to do split sheets. Ah, okay. But that's what keeps stuff organized. And that's what, you know, that's how you do good business and keep the paperwork together. You don't want to do the split sheet because you don't want to pay these people. He continues on to say that niggas say it's my songs. I should get all the money. And yes, he has a health issue that causing him to have seizures. But they get 10 times worse when he snort that dope, the booger sugar. He got to be the worst artist to DJ for. Yes, I DJ for him for 10 years, but I was always hoping it would get better. Or another major artist would recognize my talent, but he blocked everything. I never asked dude for shit. I came around with my own everything. That super unit shit is the biggest piece of bullshit. That shit is only designed so Derek can get paid while everybody else do the work. He promised to help artists, but never do. It was some good times, but it was more bad times than anything. I never in my life met somebody that complained more than him. The nigga straight up miserable. All right. And shortly after that, unfortunately, this DJ killed himself. The DJ of Webby, DJ Gutter. Killed himself and killed his wife. Now, again, the guy is 100% fault at fault for his actions. He's responsible. Now, what, but what Webby should be thankful for is that the guy enacted his violence onto himself and his wife. 
you know, not the person who he considers to be one of the catalysts of his problems and a person who he considers to actively owe him money. You know, I guess he just wasn't jail wasn't for him or he, you know, some dudes ain't just about confronting another, you know, person like that or and or he was arguing what the story is, is that he was arguing with his wife and that, you know, a person can snap after you already going through things like this. And then maybe, you know, you you arguing with your wife, it could be about finances or made this very thing, you know, and and he snapped and, and he went and pushed him over the edge. But I'm saying like, you got to understand, bro, people, you doing people like that. This guy could have came and did something to Webby. He could have he was with this man was suicidal. He could have took took Webby life and then he was suicidal. So who care about security? He would have took Webby life, took his own life or took his took Webby and then had somebody. The, the security took his life or whatever or cops. You understand? So, Webby, it's time for you to give your life to Christ, bro, in a real way. You owe the Lord. You owe him. You do. You indebted to him. We all are. But God is speaking to you, brother. You can't keep moving in the way that you're moving, doing people the way that you're doing. God's talking to you. He's telling you that. Again, you having seizures. And they going left, right. You, Your body, you can't control it. These are attacks from God trying to get your attention. He's been doing that. And then you have to answer for the things you've done. You're going to get punished. Do you understand? Those are your punishments. Those things are curses. And you have to stop doing what you're doing. Treat people right, man. You understand? You're not just and grow up and do business the right way. And that, that savage life stuff is over. That's over, man. Like, so this man... He's gone, his wife, you know, you don't have a DJ anymore. You got to, which it don't really matter. Like I said, you're not making music like you used to. You That stuff is over. Nobody's looking for another Lil Webby CD but, or album. But, bro, it's time to go ahead and, and really give your life to Christ, man. Go get baptized. Go, you know, change, just totally... Do a 180. Turn turn around. Grow up, bro, before before it's too late. Do you understand? You don't know, before the anger of the Lord come upon you, like, and you have a super seizure to where you don't come back from it, man. Do you are you listening? This is not a game. The cutthroat savage, leave that stuff behind. Leave that bad rule, savage life, cutthroat. We do it, do it, nigga, in the dough, nigga, stomp a nigga, hoe. You know, I don't give a damn about no human, no human life, especially a black one. Nah, bro. Do your people right, man. Do right by your people. And when it comes, like I said, when it comes to repentance, you have to do things. When you repent, you change. And you have to make atonement for these people you hurt. Go and you can, if you can, you have to make atonement. You can do that. You know it's family. And you know the funeral coming up. You know they're going to be, they got to pay for two funerals. They got to do a lot, man. It's it's going to be some hurt children. It's hurt people, hurt parents. Bro, go, go and put some comfort in that family because this dude cared about you. How do I know that? How Nick, hmm, you don't know them. How do you know he cared about the guy? Well, I can, have, first of all, have discernment from the Lord. But I also have this thing that sits between my two shoulders. Hmm, it's called the brain. What does, what did he say? This dude been with Webby for 10 years. Said nobody else wanted to deal with him. He was taking care of Webby when he was having these seizures. Having all he doing stuff, counseling him, telling him to take his medicine, doing stuff that he does as a brother that brothers do, you know, for, for your partners. If y'all come right, if y'all comrades doing stuff that he don't have to do. That's how I know he cared about Webby. And lastly, because he was suicidal and he know that Webby owed him bread and he was this is what's pushing him. And, and to him is the catalyst of his problems. And he didn't go 
put put Webby on the, you know, and send him into the, the afterlife. He didn't go do that. He killed himself and his wife and left Webby B. So look, man, we got to start doing our people right. Ain't no more excuses. This is why I don't support hip hop. It's a bunch of hip hypocrisy. You see what's going on now. Like it ain't everybody who at the top who ever had a name in hip hop. They get people turning on them. So, you know, look, Webby, you got to do right by people. Go ahead and you can make atonement, repent. And that's what it is. It's not saying that you pull the trigger on the man. But I'm telling you, when the person is, they put on their deathbed, when they're talking, like a person give you a deathbed confession, who going to look at that? And then when people look at that in forensics and things, they give that more credence. They don't look at that and be like, oh, that's bull crap. So with that being said, it's your man, the black effect. The real black effect, man. Let's do it in, in, in these years to come, man. And I'm talking about to our people. Let's really come together. You understand? Let's really go get what's owed to us in reparations and things like that. Let's really start growing our families again and, and, and having integrity and, and, you know, and thriving and take. Let's really grow our wealth and get out of the 1%, man. You understand? And, and share it. Share the wealth with the people who need it, bro. If you got an abundance of it. So with that being said, it's your man, the black effect, real black effect. I'm gone.